the next guests who join me are Dr. Avis Jones de Weaver and Malik Abdul. They're here to talk about what's happening in play and what's at stake during the Super Tuesday. Ladies and gents, this <laughs> is a big day. It's Super it Tuesday. Is. Everybody's been talking about it before Iowa, yes. mm -hmm. before New Hampshire, yes. and certainly after South Carolina. What do you anticipate, Dr. This is going to be, you know, this is one of those situations where this is really a up in the air opportunity. Because prior to South Carolina, it really looked like Bernie was going to completely run away with it. It did, yep. it did. Um, but the entire trajectory of this race has now changed. I expect uh, that Biden is going to come in strong tonight. I think Bloomberg is going to fizzle. And I think uh, Bernie will actually do quite well, particularly in Texas and California. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, particularly in Texas and California, you say. Malik, is that due to the Latino vote? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a little different than South Carolina. I, I think that in South Carolina, well, who was that, Terry McMillan, black people were the interruption of everything in South <laughs> Carolina. With um, considering how well Bernie did in Nevada, I expect him pro to do well in Texas and in California. The question will be, of course, is whether or not who gets over that 15% threshold. I really think that moving forward, it's a Biden Bernie race. I don't expect Bloom. I, we, we were talking before we came in that I really expect Bloomberg to be a dud after Super Tuesday. So I don't expect anything from him. So I really think we're going to be looking at Biden and Bernie Sanders. And at some point, maybe this week, Elizabeth Warren is going to drop out too. Well, interesting that you say that because she has vowed to stay in all the way to the end. What's yeah. going on with Senator Elizabeth Warren? Why would she try to stay in when she's gained no traction at all? That's a very good question. She's looking to be very strategic here. For who, she, though? Or herself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just looking to break it yes. down. I was thinking it. She you the said truth. it. She <laughs> wants the to truth. be the consensus candidate. She's hoping that if this thing does go to the convention, that she can say, hey, I'm a little progressive. I'm a little centrist. You know, maybe I'm the one who should get your vote. Vying for vying for the presidential for the presidency, bid, absolutely, and if or at least a vice a presidential slot. opportunity. But wouldn't that more likely go to an African-American woman? I'm not exactly sure. I think that, and I don't know who that perfect candidate is. The ones that they've been talking about so far, of course, is Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams. I'm not sure as far as their reach, what the Joe Biden or whom, whomever wins uh, the nomination, on the Democratic side, will win California, irrespective of who they have as a vice president. So I'm not sure if Kamala Harris can actually bring, you know, she, she can't deliver California in a way that any candidate, uh, other candidate couldn't. And we were talking before the show about Stacey Abrams, and I'm not sure about Stacey Abrams, but I do think that it will have to be some sort, some minority. And uh, the, the, uh, yeah, ahead. I was just going to say, but the... The push for a black woman on the ticket is basically a push that recognizes the fact that black women really are the backbone of the Democratic Party. So Very it true. really is about having a way of um, having a bit of inspiration for turnout and overperformance of the core base of the Democratic Party yes. come November. And, and the point is, if they go with that type of choice, uh, the cho a choice of choosing someone like a Stacey Abrams, who nearly won Georgia, and many people looking back in hindsight say that she should have won that, mm -hmm. that state mm -hmm. and become the first black female to become a mm -hmm. governor of yeah. the state. She didn't but she's still looming large among black American women. Absolutely. And that would bring out a vote uh, that many people uh, actually would love to have, exactly. including the yeah. president. Yes, yeah. I mean, Joe Biden, if he were to get the nomination, for example, People like Joe, but he's not the most inspiring, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, they would need some, a little bit of star power, I right. think, on that ticket to help him. Well, look, hold this thought. We want to come back and, and talk a little bit more about this and about the Bernie factor. And then we also want to talk about the man who sits in the Oval Office right now. Coming back with more right after this. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. 
Avis the Weaver and Malik Abdul and we're talking about the the Super Tuesday and the strategy moving ahead so we've talked about uh, Joe Biden we've talked about Elizabeth Warren let's talk about the Bernie uh, Sanders factor mm -hmm. uh, we, we did say or you did say that you think he'll do strong in Texas and California yeah. uh, but what does he have to do to get beyond the socialism moniker I don't think he can I did this is something if you listen to Bernie he owns it he doesn't he doesn't shy away from the fact that he's a democratic socialist as he calls himself so I don't think that he can move away from it at all I think the interesting thing will be what happens if Bernie Sanders does not ultimately become the nominee and I think what we're seeing with some of this um, seems like there's an effort of coalescing around Joe Biden and I think at a minimum his core supporters, you know, the ones who are really about Bernie and Bernie's personality, whether or not they would ultimately come out in November in strong numbers to defeat Donald Trump, that's not that's something I'm not sure about. Mm -hmm. Dr. Weaver, we heard you were talking about Donald Trump. We heard last night uh, Vice President Joe Biden come out and say we have to take down the Trump administration because the president uh, has been a divider more mm -hmm. than a uniter, mm -hmm. and he wants to seek to unite people. Do you think the President of the United States is watching all of this and perhaps getting his talking points and getting his program together, or will he continue to tweet? What do you, what do you think oh, is going to happen? He ain't changing. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> He's not changing. Okay. But he is watching all this. It's very interesting watching. to see his reaction to all this, because if you notice his Twitter feed, he never directly attacks Bernie Sanders, right? Uh, he is, in fact, he's sort of egging on Bernie's supporters mm -hmm. by tweeting about the fact, oh, they're trying to stick it to Bernie, they're rigging it. They, he really wants to run against Bernie Sanders, and that's very, very transparent if you look at actually uh, what he's saying on his Twitter feed. All right, Malik? He, he's a, Bernie Sanders is a much easier candidate for um, Donald Trump not just to run against, but ultimately beat. I think that Joe Biden does represent a, um, a tougher climb, if you will. I, I still think that Donald Trump will beat Joe Biden, but as far as Bernie is concerned, I think that, well, and I don't think, the president knows what he's doing. He's very good at this. So if you see him pushing this, and as someone who vote, voted for Bernie in the primary myself, you know, I can see Donald Trump's strategy, and he's hoping that Bernie Sanders, he can paint him as a socialist. He can paint him, you know, these radical policies. So all of these great things that he's saying about Donald Trump and these, oh, I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders and these overtures that he's making to his supporters, all of that will be forgotten if he um, ultimately ends up being the nominee. You're saying forgotten, and many times blacks and browns are viewed as the forgotten, mm -hmm. and yet they're looked upon as being the most pivotal vote in America this year. Yes. Uh, there was one gentleman who stated that black uh, voters will be the heroes mm -hmm. of, of this campaign. Having said that, uh, with with the likelihood that President Trump could repeat four years, mm -hmm. uh, that let's just say that oh, that's Jesus the elephant Christ. in the room. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to say that? <laughs> you have one or two scenarios here. <laughs> so, from a Democrat perspective, <laughs> what are Democrats saying about that? Because Ooh. let's let's face it, blacks yeah. are not monolithic. Yeah, you you're know? exactly. You've right. got some who vote uh, on the left for Democrats. You have some who vote on the right for Demo uh, for Republicans, and there seems to be some support out there there is building there is and I would say that uh, to his credit uh, the Trump campaign is making a very specific effort to um, attract the black vote and that's what he's supposed to do right he's running for president he's supposed to he's very overt about that um, but he's doing it in a much more aggressive way than we normally see Republican yeah. candidates do that so I just want to acknowledge does that, that. surprise you um, not, I mean, it does surprise me, but I also think it's very strategic, and he understands the power and the importance of the black vote, I would argue sometimes even more directly than some members of the Democratic <laughs> Party understands yeah. the power and of the black vote. Malik, at the top of the show, I talked about the importance of the black vote and basically stated, do not take the black vote for granted. In other words, don't promise them things and then not deliver the rewards based upon them choosing to vote for you. Mm -hmm. The President of the United States has to face this as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, Donald Trump's problem, and I've said it on this show before, Donald, Donald Trump has a messaging and a tweeting problem. <laughs> as far as his policies, you can debate, you can have healthy debates about his policies and to what extent they help the black community, but his he's able to do things, to his credit, he's able to do things 
that, for instance, Barack Obama could not. And that he that the the he has no reservations, no apprehensions about it, and he's very mm -hmm. in your face. And I think that's something that will ultimately benefit him because we can have these larger discussions about what it is that he's doing. So I expect him to continue down this road. They are opening up the locations around the country, the Black Voices for Trump locations around the country. But I think mm -hmm. that this is a good barometer. This is a good gauge for future candidates and how to engage in the Black community. I just wish you would stop. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> Malik Abdul and Dr. Avis DeWeaver, I love you both so much. Come on the show anytime. And obviously you'll be on quite a bit because we have a lot of campaigning to do Sounds beyond good. Super Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens uh, Absolutely. tonight. Good. After tonight, we'll know exactly who's going to be out there on the front lines and being the front runner perhaps going into the Democratic Convention and getting that nomination. Absolutely. All right. Thank you both so much. Thank